What's up guys, we're back here on the channel today talking about Joey Saldana, the driver out of Brownsburg, Indiana. Had a very, very long career with the World of Outlaws and a long career in general in sprint car racing, which came to an end here just probably in the last three or so years. Um, I don't think uh, that he's gonna be racing anymore from here on out. Uh, he did run, I wanna say maybe two years ago at the Knoxville Nationals, but haven't seen him in a car ever since then. So I think it's safe to say that Joey Saldana is retired, uh, but man, did he retire with some really good numbers uh, in his sprint car racing career. He's got a lot of achievements, a lot of accolades, and he's done a lot in his career, and I'm excited to get to that part of the board. But before we can get to that, uh, we're going to go through his uh, years as a full-time World of Outlaws driver, break them down year by year, see the car owners that he drove through or drove for, and uh, look at his overall stats with the Outlaws, and then we'll switch boards and look at all of the things that he was able to accomplish in his career. So we'll start it off. In 1996, Joey Saldana, that was his rookie year with the World of Outlaws. He started the year out driving the Roth Motorsports number 83 car, and then finished the year out in the Stanton number 75 car. So uh, two car owners there in his first year as a full-time driver. He had 82 starts, no wins in 96. He had five top fives, 33 top tens, and he was 11th in the overall point standings. Now from 1996 to, or from 1997 to 1999, he ran full-time with the All-Star Circuit of Champions, did run scattered starts with the Outlaws, but did not run on a full-time basis until he came back in 2000 with 92 starts, three wins, 26 top fives, 53 top tens, and sixth overall in the point standings this time driving his family-owned number 17 car, and that is the car that you will play uh, play as in the 2002 World of Outlaws video game, the white, uh, white car, black number 17. 2001, 93 starts for Joey, one win, uh, 24 top fives, 56 top tens. He was seventh in the overall point standings that year, and this time he splits the year between his family-owned 17 and yet another stint in the Roth Motorsports 83, and that is not the last time he drives for Roth. So uh, Joey Saldana and, and Dennis Roth, uh, a tumultuous relationship. They were together on a couple of different occasions throughout his career. 2002, uh, he has 91 starts, a great season here with eight victories, 30 top fives, 68 top tens, fourth in the overall point standings, which is the best that we've looked at here so far as far as the points go. And once again, back in his family-owned number 17. 2003, 87 starts, two wins, 27 top fives, uh, 59 top tens. And then he goes to third in the overall point standing. So getting better and better each and every year that goes by. And once again, in the family-owned number 17. So he's getting better and better uh, with that family car. 2004, he steps away from the family car, 79 starts, five wins, 28 top fives, 47 top tens and falls back to sixth in the overall point standings, driving the Stouffer number two S car, which he would drive for the next season as well in 2005. In 05, 78 starts that year with just one win, 19 top fives, 36 top tens, and really falls off the pace back to 13th in the overall point standings. So not really sure what happened there in 05, but you could definitely tell just by looking at the numbers uh, that the performance was definitely down. And once again, driving the Stafford number two S car. Now in 2006, gets the big break with the Casey Kane Racing number nine car. And this is uh, one of the best looking cars. I don't think the, the Budweiser is in a, the Budweiser car is not in 2006. I want to say it's maybe down here in 08 or 09, uh, but a, a long stint with the Casey Kane Racing number nine car. And this is the car that I feel like really, you know, put him on the map and and everybody remembers that Budweiser car. They remember all the other paint schemes that he had uh, throughout his years there. And he was always extremely fast, a contender every single night driving that car. So first season with KKR, 2006, 65 starts. He has seven wins the first season out, 30 top fives, 54 top tens, and right back to third in the overall point standings. Now in 2007, I have this one written in green. In my opinion, this is the best season overall for Joey Saldana in his World of Outlaws career. Now we will see a season here in just a moment that does have uh, some inflated numbers, but I'm talking overall wins, top fives, top tens, and points. So in 07, 76 starts, he has 12 wins, 40 top fives, and 65 top tens. He finishes second in the point standings, 146 behind. I cannot remember, I think it was Donnie Schatz in 2007 that won the championship there. 
He was 146 behind Donnie Schatz in 07 to finish second in the point standings. The only time that Joey Saldana would finish second in the World of Outlaws standings. 2008, 63 starts, 5 wins, 30 top 5s, 44 top 10s, slips back to 4th in the point standings. Now here's that other season that maybe some could argue you should have written this one in green, uh, but you know it, this is my channel, it's my opinion, so I put 07 in green. If you want to make your own channel, you can write 09 in green. 65 starts, 20 wins, 37 top 5s, and 48 top 10s. He finishes 3rd in points that year, so... I kind of took it as, you know, he got close to the championship, finished second. He had, what is that, 17 more top 10s, three more top fives. He had eight less wins, uh, but still a, a very good season there in 09 and 07, in my opinion, just a little bit better on the consistency side of things. 2010, still with KKR, so he's in year number one, two, three, four, five. 2010, 68 starts, another great season with 13 victories, 38 top fives, 50 top 10s, and fourth in the point standings at year's end. 2011, 41 starts, six wins, 20 top fives, 29 top tens, 11th in the point standings. And there's an asterisk here because he does get injured in 2011. And you could tell by, um, I think he ran like the first like 30-ish races or something. And then on the third turn.com, his last race before a break is at Eldora Speedway. He finishes like 21st. It says he had an accident and he only ran 11 laps of the feature. So got in a wreck there and I, I'd have to do some more research, but uh, I'm pretty sure got injured, missed like 20 or 15 or so races in the season right there and came back and finished it out in the KKR number nine car. So 2012, 74 starts. He's back full time uh, after the injury, five wins, 24 top fives, 52 top tens and back to fourth in the point standings. Now, 2013 is... Uh, where things change a little bit. New car owner driving the Modder 71M, the Hemsaw Body Shop or whatever it was car uh, in 2013. 74 starts the first year with the Modder car. One win, 21 top fives, 43 top tens, and fourth in the point standing. So these guys, they don't hit it off immediately. Fourth in points is pretty good, but only had one win in their first season. 2014, 87 starts. Now he has seven wins. 37 top fives, 60 top tens, and he finishes fifth in the overall standings in 2014. 2015, still with Modder, 75 starts, three wins, 37 top fives, and 54 top tens. Slips back to sixth place in the point standings. And in 2016, for the third time in his career, and the first time since 2001, he is back with Rob Motorsports full-time on the Outlaw Tour. 80 starts, 5 wins, 31 top 5s, 62 top 10s, and 5th in the overall point standings. Apparently, it wasn't good enough. He's not with Roth for 2017. He runs the first 30-ish races uh, in the Stenhouse, uh, well, the, the Stenhouse Marshall Racing, the car that Sheldon is in right now. He runs the first 30 races. Things don't work out. Uh, there was uh, one, one night where... Uh, Larson showed up in the team car and he won the first night out at Eagle Raceway and uh, Joey I don't think at that point in time had had a win in that car and, and I think things kind of went sideways after that night and uh, he ran a couple more races that year with uh, Indy Race Parts and Bernie Stubgen and, and another car owner but was not able to finish out the 2017 World of Outlaws season so uh, other than that, though, I mean, he had a long, long history with the with the Outlaws and um, a very success, a successful one as we look here at his World of Outlaws stats. 1,567 starts to his credit with the Outlaws. He has 105 victories, which right now is at seventh on the all-time wins list. 528 top five finishes for 33% of the time. Joey Saldana finished in the top five when he raced against the World of Outlaws and 977 top 10 finishes for 62% of the time he was inside the top 10. So incredible numbers. Uh, Joey Saldana probably going to be in the top 10 uh, all-time wins list for a very long time. I would be honestly amazed if he gets passed up uh, at 105 wins. That is just super hard to do right now. I think a guy like David Gravel can pass him. A guy like Brad Sweet could pass him. But, I mean, I'm trying to think of anybody else that's even close to that number right now, and I really can't. I know there's a couple guys like Macedo and Shuhart, Hot and Shield. They're in like the 30 or 40 range right now. But they're going to have to start winning a lot, and they're going to have to start winning now if they want to catch a guy like Joey Saldana on the all-time wins list. So uh, let's switch boards real quick, and we'll look at the accolades and the achievements for the Brownsburg Bullet. 
All right, we got board switched over now. Let's look at the achievements and the accolades and the championships and everything that Joey Saldana uh, has won throughout his illustrious career. So we'll start out. He was a two-time Kings Royal winner uh, at Eldora Speedway, and uh, those were probably two of the biggest wins of his career. As you'll see later on here in just a few moments, was not able to capture a win at the Knoxville Nationals or at the National Open, but he was very close. 2003, he was the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic winner down in Australia. That's basically the Knoxville Nationals of Australia. Uh, he won that back in 2003. 2010, Silver Cup winner at the Lernerville Speedway in Pennsylvania. 2006, he won the Brad Doty Classic. Uh, I believe that was with the Outlaws. I'm, I'm, yeah, it should be with the Outlaws in 2006. He was a three-time second-place finisher at the Knoxville Nationals. So, so very close to getting the win there at the biggest race of them all in sprint car racing. Uh, came up one spot short on three different occasions. So, uh, But that's not the last of his second-place finishes. He was also second at the 1996 historical big one and second at the 2016 National Open at Williams Grove Speedway. So this guy, and who was it the other day we were talking about? It was either, I think it was Andy Hillenberg, if I'm not mistaken, that finished second at like every big race and was super, super close. It might have been somebody else. Was it Hillenberg? I can't remember if it was Hillenberg. It might have been somebody else. I, I have really bad memory. But there was somebody we talked about a few days ago that was second at every single big race. Two times he was a champion of the Ohio Sprint Week. Uh, most of those, or both those championships coming before the year 2000 when he was still a full-time all-star driver. He has 74 to, uh, wins with the All-Star Circuit of Champions, which puts him at third on the all-time wins list with that series. And in 1995, he had 18 wins in a single season against the All-Stars. And somehow he finished fifth in the overall point standings. I'm not sure how that happens, uh, but crazy stuff. Uh, 18 in 1995, but 74 overall with the All-Stars. 1996, he was the World of Outlaws Rookie of the Year. And uh, in two times in his career, he had the most wins in a season with the World of Outlaws, and they were back-to-back -back years. I want to say it was, uh, what, one of them was 2009. I think the other one was either 2008 or 2010. So most wins in a season with the Outlaws on two different occasions. He was the 2010 Gold Cup winner, and he's one of just five drivers in the 46-year history of the World of Outlaws to win 20 races in a single season, and that happened in 2009. Also in that year, one of those wins was the inaugural Ironman 55 at uh, Federated Auto Parts Raceway at I-55, the longest race of the season for the World of Outlaws. He got the win the first time in 2009. 2014, he won the four crown nationals uh, with the Outlaws at the Eldora Speedway. 2023, he was inducted into the Nash National Sprint Car Hall of Fame along with uh, five other drivers. I think Ralph Shaheen was uh, a broadcaster that was brought in as well to that National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. So Joey Saldana will always be enshrined in the Hall of Fame, and for good reason, as you can see for, just from this board. If you turn the video on just at this point, uh, you would see that this guy is worthy of the Hall of Fame. And also in 2007, he was the Eagle Nationals champion at Eagle Raceway in Nebraska. So a lot of achievements, a lot of accolades, championships, uh, so many victories for the uh, Brownsburg bullet, bullet, Joey Saldana. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but when a guy races as much as he did with the Outlaws, uh, we're going to have videos this long. Just wait until we get to the likes of Steve Kinzer, the likes of Sammy Swindell, uh, Donnie Schatz eventually. Those are going to be probably 20-minute long videos trying to get through all the stuff that those guys accomplished throughout their careers. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the like button. Comment down below who you would like to see here on the channel from the 2002 Rat Bag World of Outlaws video game, diving into the careers of those drivers tomorrow or whatever. My next video, I think I might do Brad Fur, who is uh, was one of the random guys that you would see on that game, the driver out of Pleasanton, California, in the red number two. Brad Fur might be next, but let me know who would you like to see next on the channel. We'll see you guys here in the next one.